Welcome everyone to CMF Pariyara meeting of today. We have chosen the topic as the truth. Let us read John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We shall meditate upon this on our relevant context. We are all amidst a pandemic. So we wait for swab results, blood results, exam results. So in this painstaking process and again putting more context currently 2000. 15 batch are waiting for the dates the dates of their exams which have been postponed as well so we wait for a lot of results but during all this wait we all want the truth in the shortest possible time the truth in the shortest possible time so someone who is waiting for a swab results okay what do they want? They want to know, am I positive? Am I negative? Just like that. So nothing short of say a written document can satisfy our curiosity or anxiety. There can be a lot of uh, word of mouth reassurances, but at the end of the day, yes, if it is from authorities or if it's from universities or if it is from a lab, we would like some written document. So, uh, the inspiration for this message came while I was sitting in code triage the other day. I used to uh, sit and read there since uh, for the past couple of months our college library closes at 10 p.m. So uh, triage has a bit more facility to sit and read and there is also an internet connection there. So anyway, uh, sitting and reading there around somewhere close to midnight a student comes very anxious and saying uh, this person had given a PCR PCR uh, swab in the morning and result has not come yet there's a house surgeon uh, next to me and this person was trying to uh, counsel this student but at the end of the day, again, the house surgeon also checked on their computer. Results were not there. So, house surgeon looks at me expectedly and uh, hoping I will give this student my regular sermon. What is my regular sermon? Okay, so we used to have uh, this sessions of uh, psych psychological support for COVID patients. Our usual sermon would be Cheta Jechi, Pedicure on the Manda, the Pacorona de Samufia Benatinda Gattavana, Ella work on the Earth Pitch positive on under. And a tested Jelapa negative, I again, any other positive I altane, or a patus and any negative on the Anna Chalapo, Ningalabolu, Maria, on the Randa Masumba, Corona one the Void on Darigam, Chachata virus, Shadiated the Lizalim, Chalapol Testale, positive I to Ghana, other London Ningal Pedic and Dawsha Villa. We used to give this sermon almost to almost every single COVID patient admitted here until a while back. So, how surgeon expected him to deliver this sermon? But somehow, this time it was different. I don't know. Somehow, I felt like. I needed to check for myself. Okay, so swab results were not declared until around 11 p.m. But immediately I checked my COVID group, and just two minutes before, a new uh, swab results have been updated. And praise be to God, this student's PCR result came as negative. So I gave this person the truth. Yes, you are negative. Now, I could have gone ahead with a sermon with, uh, without even uh, say seeking for the truth as uh, usually we do most of the times. But this time, I don't know, had to check and 
praise be to God result has come is two minutes back and this person was negative and that can give this person relief otherwise this person would have in irrespective of how much count is linking would have been buried for the whole of the night so no amount of counseling can be equivalent to the truth now but the real question is are our lives as simple as a positive or a negative swab result is it as simple as a pass or a fail in an exam or okay coming to a bit more difficult sense is it as simple as either your pet scan lighting up like a Christmas tree denoting that you have a recurrence of that cancer that you have taken chemo or had a surgery or just having a normal pet scan is our lives as simple as that where we just want the results or yes or no is that the truth John chapter 8 verse 30 to 32 as Jesus spoke these things many believed in him so he said to the Jews who had believed him if you continue in my word you are truly my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free my dear brothers and sisters let us keep this verse in mind john chapter 8 verse 32 then you will know the truth and the truth will set us free again we also read in john chapter 18 verse 36 to 38 conversation between jesus and pilate jesus answered my kingdom is not of this world if it were my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the jews but now my kingdom is not of this realm then you are a king the pilot said you say that i am a king jesus answered for this reason i was born and have come into the world to testify to the truth everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice what is the truth pilot asked okay this is a very important uh, verse from the gospel of john so during this his prayer in gethsemane jesus tells god sanctify them through thy truth thy word is the truth the word of god the bible the word of god that is the truth so regarding this conversation a lot of intellectual debate scholarly debate has gone uh, about this how Pilate asks okay what is this truth so the Greek word rendered as truth in English translations of the Bible is aletheia aletheia which literally means unconcealed and connotes sincerity in addition to factuality and reality so this is the truth that uh, Pilot, what is the truth? This is probably what Pilate was asking. Whereas Jesus' use of the term or the truth uh, it appears to indicate absolute revealed knowledge. Absolute revealed knowledge. Okay. So the wisdom or the truth from God, it is absolute. It is the word of God. It is inspired by God. It is not acquired to human effort. It is given or passed on to man from God so we are supposed to seek this absolute truth let us read Amos chapter 3 verse 7 to 8 surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants the prophets the lion has roared who will not fear the Lord has spoken who will not prophesy so surely the sovereign Lord 
does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. Now, dear brothers and sisters, while our patients okay, who are under our care demand the truth about their test results, about their diagnoses, about their prognosis, how long do I have to live and questions like that, we do as doctors deliver it sooner or later. Sooner or later we do deliver upon this say simple truths but do we provide them with the absolute truth we have to introspect let us consider this from um, the Bible let us read Acts chapter 2 verse 22 to 24 if possible uh, read along with me uh, take your Bibles and read along or uh, please concentrate so this is where Peter, after being anointed by the Holy Spirit, speaks to the Jews. So, Peter says, Men of Israel, listen to this message. Jesus of Nazareth was a man certified by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourself know. He was delivered up by God's set plan and foreknowledge and you by the hands of the lawless put him to death by nailing him to the cross but God raised him from the dead releasing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for him to be held in its clutches so it was impossible for death to hold Jesus Christ and it continues, Acts chapter 2 verse 33, Exalted then to right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. So he is proclaiming the anointing of the Holy Spirit, one of the absolute truths of the Bible. And he is proclaiming the Holy Spirit and the anointing. Now, we also read in the verses forward, when people heard this, they were cut to the heart and asked Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise belongs to you and your children and to all who are far off, to all whom the Lord our God will call to himself. With many other words he testified and he urged them, Be saved from this corrupt generation. Those who embraced this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to the believers that day. My dear brothers and sisters, anointed by the Holy Spirit uh, this one uh, sermon of um, uh, Peter was able to win our 3,000 disciples and what is has been given this okay while the message is very powerful let us understand that there is no guile or there is no trickery in this message there are no f much fancy words but the truth this is nothing but the truth and this is what those who are really genuinely seeking the Lord wanted the truth and they when Peter gave out the truth they were cut to the heart or again Holy Spirit worked and that uh, the Holy Spirit gave these the Jew, some Jews repentance so it's all about speaking the truth in love now while uh, we know that uh, those who seek the Lord will come to the Lord eventually and uh, the Lord is only delaying his coming so as as many possible as can be saved but yes there will be people who oppose there will be people who oppose our message of the truth but then again there will also be people who will stand up for us as well so let us read 
In Acts chapter 5 verse 33 to 39, when the council members heard this, they were enraged and they resolved to put the apostles to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a short time. Men of Israel, he said, consider carefully what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Theudas rose up, claiming to, some, to be somebody, and about 400 men joined him. He was killed and all his followers dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and drew away people after him. He too perished and his followers were scattered. So, in the present case I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go, for if their purpose or endeavor is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. So let us meditate upon this last sentence. For if their purpose or if our purpose or endeavor is of human origin, it will fail. If it is from God, the adversaries, the supposed uh, earthly authorities, the supposed uh, people who are oppressing us, they will not be able to stop us and they may find themselves fighting against the God. Because the Lord fights our battles and battles are for the Lord. So it all depends. Okay. So our purpose or endeavor, okay, it shall be achieved not by uh, cunning words. It is not by, uh, say, diplomacy alone. But it will be by the uh, active uh, work of the Holy Spirit. And they will not be able to stop us. So again, here also comes the importance of truth. So, Again, uh, I always believed and uh, still do um, say that honesty is the best policy. At the best of the times and also at the worst of the times. And we are going through some of the worst of the times, but still honesty is the best policy. And sometimes honesty means admitting that we are flawed ourselves. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest in me. So the truth is not Anub. Okay, the truth is not, is, you know, the truth is Christ, and the Christ's power dwelling within us, and the Holy Spirit's anointing dwelling within us. This is the truth. And so, in, even when we admit that we are powerless, or say, uh, some of my PG teachers say, okay, you might be a cardiologist, you might be a super specialist, but at the end of the, end of the day, separate you from your fancy instruments in a uh, jungle, and you are uh, almost just as helpless as a common man. So, yes, honesty is the best policy, and the absolute truth is the power of the Lord. Now, regarding omission of the truth. Sometimes we omit giving out the whole truth to our dear brothers and sisters and relatives. We might mean well, but usually it does not end like that. Okay, one common saying is, what he or she does not know cannot hurt them. Yeah, probably it is partially true because as long as they don't know, it might not hurt them. But at the end of the day, they might or they will probably come to know about it and they will be really hurt. They will be really hurt. So Luke chapter 8 verse 17. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out in the open. So we are not supposed to omit on the truth. We are have, uh, give the whole truth and mm, even more, even more than just the truth of this world, but the truth of the gospel. So if we are able to 
if you are to break the bad news about the prognosis yes your pet scan christmas tree your uh, disease has uh, recurred or you might uh, have to say okay you have only so many more months to live so uh, we are to break this bad news and as we are giving the truth sooner or later so if we are doing like uh, breaking the bad news giving that truth are we also not duty bound as servants of christ to share the absolute truth about christ's sacrifice for us on the cross are we all not duty bound so if you do not speak about that we would be not faithful to our calling N not be faithful to our calling another part of the scripture it says do not grieve like those who have no hope so again we are in this profession so uh, let us introspect on whether we should just leave uh, our patients some of them who may not have come across uh, the our gospel of hope are we supposed to leave them to that hopelessness and leaving them grieving like we give someone with no hope or are we supposed to share the absolute truth about Christ's sacrifice for us on the cross so the next question is do we lack the conviction on this truth okay okay we can come to meetings we preach messages but do we actually lack that conviction of this truth that Christ died for us for you and our son my son do we lack that conviction or are we still trying to bluff our way out of situations where it would be an injustice to deny others this truth so are we trying to bluff our way saying oh secular secularism oh uh, say what will this other person think? oh it will affect my career are we trying still uh, are we still trying to bluff our time ourselves out of this uh, situations even at this times when such uh, grim times we have to introspect so the names of god in the old testament so on all these things uh, the old names of god in old testament jehovah nissi the lord my banner jehovah rafa the lord the healer jehovah shamma the lord is here Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will supply. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. So, we should be able to give them the truth that Jehovah, our Lord, Jesus Christ, is the Lord of peace. The Lord is a healer. Lord is a Lord will supply. Lord will is the Lord of hosts. We should be able to give out this truth. Please make sure our absolute truth should not get diluted in the relative and imperfect truths of this world yes there are a lot of truths there are discoveries there are uh, physics there is uh, say algorithms and medical science and all and all that but there is only one absolute truth and that is that God loved man and God so loved a man let us read Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 to 17 therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes you may be be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace in addition to all this take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God so the first mentioned in this amongst the armor of God is the belt of truth so you are going to war with this uh, say we are doing spiritual warfare and you cannot go to war based on the lies you have to hold stick fast to truth so you have to girdle yourself with truth many times uh, God tells the prophets okay girdle yourself or 
uh, yes so you cannot go to war based on lies once the truth is exposed the soldiers will morale if this a country if uh, say a uh, nation or a village is founded on lies once that truth comes out the soldiers will lose their morale our truth should be god jesus christ alone our truth should not be some related truth or one preacher or say one denomination no our truth should be jesus christ who is infallible whom death could not hold so that we will never lose that morale we will never uh, fail because it is our lord it is our lord who will get the job done my dear brothers and sisters we are all in a pandemic but we are where we were always amidst spiritual warfare as well even before the pandemic also we were in spiritual warfare now whether we have lied to ourselves into believing otherwise it is what it is then now and the near expectant future also a spiritual warfare will be going on the question is can we use the truth as our armor and also the weapon so it is truth okay it, here it says okay it's and from the belt of truth it also says the sword of the spirit which is the word of the god so the absolute truth yes the word is also the truth also okay what does jesus say okay uh, sanctify them in the truth uh, thy word is the truth so will we be able to use the truth as both our armor and weapon in this difficult days forward let us all pray to our lord that the truth shall prevail in our lives and we shall stand fast to the truth of the christ john chapter 8 verse 30 to 32 as jesus spoke these things many believed in him so he said to the jews who had believed in him If you continue in my word you are truly my disciples then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free my dear brothers and sisters let us pray to our lord that he shall provide us with that truth and the conviction of the truth of our lord jesus christ and that truth shall set us free and yes the truth shall set us free from all Thank you all. Uh, I wish you all have another week of a closer walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.